Hello ladies and gents, today I'm going to show you how to make tools within Vapi. First, let's check out our demo. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. Would you like to know the time? Yeah, I'd love to know the time. Hmm. The time is 1027. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Oh, uh, perfect. Can you run the time again for me, please? Hmm. The time is 1027. If you need anything else, feel free to ask. All right, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. That's our demo. This is a tool working. I don't have any functions in here at all. So I'm going to jump straight into a Figma board and show you the whole setup. We are in our Figma board. Let's go step by step so you can see how exactly I did this whole process. Step one. Step one is to make an MT on your assistant. So you'll click this button in VAPI, then go to the advanced settings and click on uh, tool calls and tool calls. We need this for, for the updating to work later on. So please make sure you enable tool calls in the first step. Second step is you'll jump into the documentation link where you have the API references and you'll find the get assistant. And in here, what you'll do is you post your API key and uh, your ID of your assistant into here. We'll go over this uh, in a real time. So for step three, what you'll do is you'll grab the response that you get from the uh, get assistant when you click send here. Uh, you'll get something that looks like this. And what you wanna do is you only want to extract this bit of the object. You just wanna grab this. And what we'll be doing is we'll be putting in our function object into that. So tools have functions within them. So this is the setup of a function and I'll, I'll go through the documentation as well in a sec, but this is the stuff that we need. So what you'll do is you'll copy the thing in red. We'll go into, uh, we'll go and edit this so that we can put our tools into an array of functions or function. Uh, and then what does async mean? Async basically means if you have true turned on, so if this is true here, then VAPI will not wait for the response back from uh, make.com. It will just keep on going through the conversation. If you have it for a set to false, it will keep on waiting for the response from make.com. This is the result that VAPI is expecting from uh, a webhook response. So it needs to, needs to be in this sort of setup. Uh, and then uh, this is an example this is an example output I had in make.com and this is how uh, it had to be put into our response here. All right, so that was step four. We have to change these. This is step six. This is actually step five here. So we have to then go and grab our webhook URL from make.com. And then we need this because into our function what we'll need to do is to paste the webhook into our function. So right in here. And essentially what I've done is this purple bit here is actually the green bit here. So actually let's make that purple so it makes more sense. We'll color code it nicely. So yeah, so this bit here is the stuff within the square brackets here. So that's the square brackets here. Just so you know where everything ends and starts just like that and yeah so what you do is you paste your url just in here and if you guys like I'll, i will put I'll, I'll put this uh function into the description all right so that was step six and then step seven is what we're going to do is the basic idea is uh, we want to patch the assistant or to update an assistant with the tools that we've created here. So whatever we have here, what we'll be doing is we'll be patching it in Postman so that we can install those into VAPI. So once they're installed and you've got your tool calling enabled in the in here, uh, you can then change everything in the settings afterwards. So uh, we'll be using this 
and the VAPI section. So I'll put that in the description below as well. But a big word of warning, if you did already write a prompt into your assistant, do not do anything until you've copied your prompt, prompt over to a safe spot. Because patching it this way that we've had it set up here, um, or at least the way I have, have it set up here, it will actually get rid of the prompt with test prompt. But I think in our case, because we had actually literally nothing here for that section, uh, it will actually completely just wipe it for us. So just be very careful if you already got a prompt in there. And how it'll look like in Postman, and we'll do this in a second, is you'll go into Postman, uh, put in Put in the bearer token, your ID of your assistant. You'll go into the headers, do the content type, paste the stuff into the uh, raw body of Postman and, and click send. And once you click send, you'll get a 200 response and you'll get something back that looks like this. Nice. And then what we'll do is we'll go back into VAPI and how to check if everything has worked, if we've actually installed our tools, is to go back into our API documentation, go back into our get assistant ID, click on send with our ID string of our of our assistant, and then uh, you'll get a response where you have the tools in, within here. So with this little arrow, you can see that now we've got the tools in here. So once you've got all this, and this was step eight, so step nine, the final step in this setup uh, is essentially to set up our make.com, uh, change your prompt settings. And the reason why we chose the tool calling at the, on the advanced settings is so that we can actually change the prompts and settings uh, as long and they won't change uh, this stuff here. So it won't change the setup here that we uh, tried so hard to make. And again, just a reminder, make sure to add tool calls in both server and client messages and remove uh, the function calling from it. Uh, and this is just a prompt I had in my conversation here. Uh, what we'll do is now we'll get into the whole uh, hands-on stuff. So let's actually build it. So, so I'm gonna try and follow my steps as much as I can uh, that I outlined in the Figma board. So step one was to create an assistant Blank template, continue, create new assistant. I'm not gonna call it anything just so um, we'll leave it as new assistant. I'm not gonna change anything else. The only thing I'll do is go to advanced and then uh, it's gonna get rid of everything because we don't need any of this at the moment. And just gonna click on tool calls click everything else off. Great, now that's done. Going to publish that. Go to model. So I'm gonna publish that. Come up here, copy the assistant ID. We're gonna jump over into our get assistant documentation. I've already put my bearer token into the authorization and I'm just gonna paste that in. And to get your bearer token, what you do is you go into uh, your email here. So you click on this uh, and then you uh, click on API keys. And then once you're there, you copy your, um, you copy the private key. So yeah, you'll paste the key into the authorization and then click send. What happens now is you get a response back. And what we want is this part here. So we're gonna put that into our JSON Pathfinder. I'll just paste it in. And in between, after this line, what you want to do is you want to enter tools, quotation mark, semicolon, and then here, put the square brackets, just edit it slightly. And in this section, we're going to put our function in. I'm just going to fix this up so that you one line. Actually, that should be fine. Let's close that. There you go. So that's uh, this and this is a plus one object. That starts and finishes right here. This will be the function. So this is the space for the function right here. And I'm just gonna paste in the one that I have on my Figma board already. So 
the one that I highlighted in green. Uh, don't worry about all this. Uh, if you're also not sure how to edit JSON, completely fine. What, what we'll do is jump into ChatGPT, paste it in, just say clean this JSON up for me. And this response we're going to put into uh, Postman. Right, so let's copy that over. So now we're in Postman, click on new request, go into body and copy that whole thing over that we just made from ChatGPT. So that's in here. While we are here as well, we need to change a few things. So let's go into our make.com setup, copy address to clipboard. So I've already made a new scenario. Uh, paste that in here. So this would be the new webhook that this is going to call for this one specific get time function. And if you notice, uh, you can actually tell it exactly what to do. So let me get the time for you. And I might actually say, so it's like thinking like, hmm, let me get the time for if it's complete, it'll say today's time is this. And if it failed, it will say this. And if the risk response is delayed by four seconds, so if it takes longer than that, it will say this one specific thing. So you can actually tell it, give it custom uh, phrases to say uh, specific intervals, which is much more powerful than using just functions. Okay, so once we've got this, we need a few things. Let's jump back into our APR documentation. Copy this over where your update assistant is. Put it into Postman. Change your ID or well, replace the ID with your assistant ID. Copy that over. Uh, and then you need to set up your authorization. So you'll click on here. And I've already got one set up, but let's click on bearer token. I've already posted in my bearer token. I've got my content type application JSON. That is all we need to make this call. So just to show you guys, uh, we needed that and this and the body. And the body is what we're going to send uh, right here. So all this stuff here. And this will install the tools. Click on patch right here. So click on patch, send. And so now, um, now you should be able to see the tools. And now when we go to get assistant, click send, uh, you'll see the tools there. Uh, so they're all here. Uh, and now what should happen is that when we, when we change this, we publish and change anything within the system, it should not now change the tools. Yeah, so if you do end up changing your prompt and something like that happens and it does, the tools don't come up, just send the uh, patch request again. Uh, so if you now refresh this, because we've patched it, all that should be gone in here. And now if we just go test test, let's actually change a few things like even this and see what happens. Click on publish. And then let's double check whether that's uh, kept the tools there. So the tools are here. Uh, yeah, so what you might have to do is you might just have to repatch it again after changing the prompt once or twice, but make sure you've saved your prompt somewhere before you tackle any of this. So now it seems like I can go back in and uh, change uh, my prompt to whatever I like. So, This is the exact same setup I had before. And if we click on publish, uh, that's that's working here. And now if we just go to double check whether the tools are still there, uh, they are indeed still here, perfect. Now the one thing we might have to change is our uh, make.com setup because we haven't set that up yet. So let's do that real quick right now. So let's click on OK. And um, what I might do is for this, I'll show you guys a little trick. Delete this, go tools, basic trigger. Let's just put whatever in here. Click on this and go HTTP request, make a request. And what you'll do is you post this link into this URL. This is all you have to do and maybe just change your time zone. So just Google what time zone you're in, press OK. Let's run. And this is great because you don't have to have a webhook activated to run a scenario every single time. So it saves and getting that involved. 
Now we've got a response here back. Perfect. Let's put a JSON. Uh, and here what we need to do is pass the JSON. So whatever data came through here, click on this, press OK. Let's run it again. What we want to do now is create a JSON in the format that uh, the, the way it's specified in this in this setup. If you go back into the documentation, go tool calling, press copy, jump back into make.com, uh, go add, generate, paste this in here, click on generate again. It'll fill auto fill everything for you. Click save, uh, click on add item. Here, this will be empty for now. The result is the uh, date and time. So we want this, but at the moment it's coming back with like the whole the whole thing. So we just want to format it a little bit. So we go format date, format date bracket, and this brings up uh, a bunch of functions. Then you go, we only want the time. So hour, hour, a minute minute uh, and then we want to change it to you Europe uh, slash Warsaw and then just close that off Press OK let's see how that works so now we are only getting back the time which is uh, 11 18 and the call and the call ID we haven't got that running yet but we'll set that up in a sec so now what we can do is just get rid of this, get our webhook response back. So add it called as Vappy time. Press OK. Go webhooks, webhook response. And then here we just want the response from this JSON string. Click press OK. All right, so we've got the whole setup. Let's click run. Let's jump back into Vappy to run it. And I think if everyone's setting up properly, this should can call my uh, that whole setup. And we should get a response, but um, I don't think I don't think it actually will yet because we haven't set up that uh, tool call ID. So uh, let's talk with the assistant first. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Would you like to know the time? Yeah, sure. Hmm. Let me get the time for you. I couldn't get the current time for you. Click on here. Tool call and ID, press OK. Uh, and now when we run that again, we'll wait for new data. Let's do a final test. Let's go back your dashboard, talk with assistant. Hey. Hey. Would you like to know the current time? Yeah, sure. Hmm. The current time is 11.20. Have a great day. Goodbye. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Goodbye. All right. So as you saw, the final piece of the puzzle, we're just putting a, a tool call ID into the make.com setup and everything is working. So thank you guys for watching. Our tools are very powerful. I'll be making a new video very soon with like a whole build that's a bit more advanced than just this. Um, so this is probably like part one of a series. If you are a business owner and you do want a voice assistant installed or implemented into your own system, you can book with me below. Or if you're a student and you just wanted to learn some low code platforms, uh, you want some clarity in the AI space, you're welcome to book a call with me via the lessons link as well. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys around next time. Signing out.